Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about this. Bam! So stay tuned. All right, you guys. Um, so this is the Craftsman V20 stick vac. I think the model number is something like CMC VS001 or something like that. Um, and we were able to pick this up at Lowe's, okay? Um, no, Lowe's not sponsoring this. Nobody gave this to us. We're, we just bought this and we just happened to be reading it. So um, anyways, we were in the store and we, and we saw this and we thought it was a very interesting vacuum. It seems like a very nice vacuum when you first look at it. And don't get me wrong, it is a nice vacuum. Um, so right now you can pick up the vacuum kit. It comes with one battery, um, the attachments, uh, the extension wand, and a charger for roughly $199. Um, if right now at the time of this video recording, um, if you buy the kit or the, uh, I guess the vacuum, you can buy, you get one extra uh, V20 two amp hour battery. So it's roughly about 200 bucks for two batteries in the vacuum. You can get like a 10% off coupon somewhere, um, either in the mail or some one of your neighbors aren't using it or something and you could get it for roughly around 180. So 180, I'm just gonna go off and say it is a great deal, but wait to the end or actually watch the video if you wanna figure out some knickknacks about it. All right, so like I said, in the, in the kit, you get this. I'm just gonna assume everyone gets something like this for roughly around 180 to 200 bucks, okay? So there's a lot of stick vacuums out there, okay? And usually I don't really like stick vacs because they usually work in pretty much one way, okay? So generally, the cheap, really cheap stick vacuums, they pull, um, they pull, I don't know, the air up, and then there's like a cone filter and then, and then bad exhaust comes out the back. Um, Dyson has improved the, the, the industry a little bit or, or at least that section a lot by adding a lot of cyclones and, and, and making it really clean and HEPA filters and all that fun stuff. But their stuff is somewhere like six, seven, eight hundred bucks, okay? And we have a Dyson, I think it was a V8 or a V10, I can't remember. Um, and we use it a lot. Um, but anyways, we saw this, we thought it'd be really nice so we picked it up. So let's talk about it. So um, we're gonna go ahead and say, all right, so this is in the v Craftsman V20 line. Obviously you can use any of the Craftsman V20 batteries, okay? I don't know why this battery's still on here. All right, um, don't get this confused with the 20V stuff, because there is a Craftsman 20V stuff that is sold at, I think it's whatever Sears and outlet centers or whatever that are still open, but the V20 stuff is usually sold at Lowe's and any of the V20 power tool batteries that you have, like drill circular saws, um, I think they have a miter saw, whatever, sanders, whatever, you can use any of those batteries on this vacuum, which is what makes it interesting. Um, a lot of Dyson vacuums and stuff, those batteries are not detachable and chargeable. Um, I believe they recently started making some that are detachable um, or detachable and just inter swappable. So that makes it very convenient. Um, so let's talk about the battery again. Um, so this is a two amp hour battery and they say on low it can get somewhere around one hour. So for me, we've got somewhere around 50-ish minutes on low, um, but let's be serious, who really uses the vacuum on low, okay? People are usually using it on high or max, which is just high. Um, and if you use it on a high, a two amp hour battery will get you somewhere close to 15 minutes. Um, sometimes the batteries take a lot of cycles to reach their peak performance, maybe like, I don't know, a handful of cycles before they can reach their peak. Uh, we did cycle through two of these batteries a couple times and we can get somewhere around 12 to 15 minutes on high, okay? Um, so make sure you keep that in mind. Um, if you put it on medium, I don't know, but I think you get probably somewhere close to 30 minutes on medium. And that's with us using um, the active brush roll. So obviously if you use the active brush roll, um, it absorbs more power or absorbs more energy. Um, so keep that in mind. So in the kit, you get all this um, and you get this. This is the thing that actually makes this vacuum really nice or really interesting. So this is a active brush roll um, with two LED lights on each side. So four LEDs, okay? And it is very nice and simple to use. Um, the build quality of this entire system is I would say a little bit above the, um, any cheap vacuum that you would find at, I don't know where you ever find cheap vacuums or Walmart or off-brand stuff or whatever. It is pretty much the build quality you would expect from the Craftsman tool stuff that you pick up at Lowe's, okay? I'm not talking about Craftsman like 30, 40 years ago. I'm talking about the Craftsman stuff that you pick up at Lowe's right now. Same build quality, and that quality is not, it's not bad. It's pretty good, okay? It's not like the best, but it's pretty good. So make sure you keep that in mind. It's got an active brush roll here. Um, the power, power is transferred to these two pins here, and I do like how 
some people may or may not like it, um, how the pins are a little bit protruded out so you can hack it or do something to it if you do want. Um, but because it also has um, plastic detents or whatnot, you can actively hold the vacuum or store the vacuum in its upright position like this, okay? It leans a little bit forward, but I think it's designed to do that because of the weight distribution with the battery, um, but it is really, really nice. The brush roll does come off easily by pulling this tab here, and then the brush roll comes out, you can fairly easily clean it. Dog hair and hair gets tangled in this a lot, okay? There is no like anti-tangle mechanism in this thing, but um, I mean, this is like a $200 vacuum, so make sure you keep that in mind too. Um, like I said, build quality, very nice. You get these two attachments, the crevice nozzle um, and some area floor brush type nozzle. And they do fit on here like this. And, you, and they fit on the pole like so. Um, you can store it any way you want. Like if you want this one up, you could store it like this on the pole and it works like so or you can store it this other way if you don't like it that way. But it is like a friction type fit with rubbery feet on it so it doesn't go anywhere. Um, usually I don't really use this too much um, because we're mainly using that. Um, so there is that. I will also remind you, so this is on here with a friction fit, okay? Um, this does have a clip, an active holder. So you, if you wanted to use this on the end of the pole or on the vacuum itself, it does clip in there, okay? So if you're doing something really hard or you're rubbing up against the rug or whatever, you don't have to worry about this, these attachments falling off because it is an active mechanism by holding it with a clip, okay? It is sometimes a little difficult to get off, but it is really nice that they made that an active, um, um, held in by a clip so that it doesn't have to, don't have to worry about it falling off. And I hate it when it falls off, okay? That's like the worst when you're using a vacuum. So you get that, and this is the vacuum itself, okay? The vacuum actually has low, medium, high. I think I already talked about it. Um, you, there's a, there is a dedicated button for the brush roll on and off. The LED lights on the brush roll come on only when it's on. You cannot use the vacuum with the LED lights on and no brush roll, okay? Uh, it's, it's activated by the brush roll or same time as the brush roll. Sliders, power button. Um, it does have a post motor filter back here that I can figure out how to get out. It's nothing special. It's literally just a piece of like mesh. It doesn't seem like it's HEPA filtration to me or anything like that, but I mean, that's where you're getting. So um, it is there. Um, I'll turn it on for you real quick and you can see how loud it is. It helps you put the battery in there. Low. Medium, high. Okay. We'll also tell you, show it to you with the brush roll. I'm not sure if you heard that, but um, the brush roll speed adjusts with the vacuum um, suction setting that you set. So if you use the vacuum on speed one, which is low, um, the brush roll doesn't spin as fast. It spins a little slower. If you throw it on high, then the brush roll also spins high. So that is convenient because it's not a single mode uh, brush roll. Therefore, if you want to extend battery life and you just need low, you're not always using the brush roll on maximum speed. All right, so this attachment is actually very nice as you just saw like this, because you can use the attachment with the brush roll directly attached to the vacuum. And because of that, it makes it very nice and convenient for vacuuming stairs, okay? Even if we don't have uh, carpet stairs, when our previous home we had carpet stairs and, and sometimes it was a little bit difficult to vacuum the carpet stairs mainly because um, the either stick vacuums were either too long, so you're holding it like this, or it was too short, so you're going like this. But in this configuration, um, it is the brush roll does work actively with the lights, and because it's like very short configuration, it is very convenient to vacuum the stairs like this. If you have stairs, especially carpeted stairs, this is probably a really good vacuum for you, I would say. Um, 
Not sure if I mentioned nobody's sponsoring this video, so nobody gave this to us, we picked this up. So we can say, I guess, whatever we want. Uh, it also does have on the back here a VersaTrack hook system. So if you have like the VersaTrack hook system, actually I found that it also works on the Rubbermaid, I think it's called Fast Track or something like that. Um, you can just hook this on there like that. So it is convenient. Um, and we'll talk about the suction canister here real quick. So this suction canister is obviously not very big, um, but it does come off fairly easily. You pull it off just like so, and if you do want to put it back on, you put, you make sure you slide it on this side first, and then you press down, and it's on, okay? Um, so this is actually very interesting, okay? There's one big cyclone on the bottom, nothing too special, a lot of vacuums have that, um, and it does have a little mesh um, filter inside. And the way you dump this out, let me get something to dump it out with. Is, so you take this, all right, and you dump it out by pressing this. All right, you see, everything just fell down there. And that's with a lot of dog hair, okay? So here, here's a lot of pet hair that was inside, okay? So that fell out fairly simply. Usually, everything always gets clogged up and you stick your hand in there and pour it out, but in this case, works fairly well, okay? Uh, there is the main filtration system on here, okay? So the filter, you can literally just pull off, okay? And they tell you that this filter is washable and cleanable. This, that's a good thing and a bad thing depending on who you ask. But so the way you clean this mainly is you hold it and then you can uh, spin it across the canister and it allows you to clean the vacuum or the filter. So watch, I'll show you again real quick. So there is an, um, when you spin this, it actually spins the filter like so. They tell you to spin it a couple times and, and wash it like every 31 days or like a month or something like that. Um, so if you do want to wash it, you can just pull the entire filter canister assembly thing off and you push this down like so and the filter pops out. You could either blow it out with compressed air or just wash it. Personally, I really hate this type of filter design. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more in a second. Um, but washing it, I think it's okay, but you gotta let it dry fairly out. And you can't put it in backwards because there's like pins here that allow you to only put it in one way. So if, if you do clean the filter, I will, I will um, make sure you keep this tip in mind. You wanna push the debris out in the opposite way that it came in. So right now the debris comes in from the bottom like so. If you're blowing it out with compressed air or water, you wanna make sure you put the water in from top down to make sure it filters and pushes all the debris and other stuff out of there. So the main reason I don't like this filter, there's actually very big two reasons, is I'll, sh I'll throw out some really close picks in here, but the way that it agitates or cleans the filter is there is raised plastic ridges on um, this canister. And what happens is as you turn the filter assembly, the, ag the little uh, plastic pins rub up against it and pretty much press the filter medium, all right? So that's how it gets the shake, 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 tick, 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 all right? So check this out. You feel it? Um, so I'll throw out some pictures so you can see it more clearly. You can hit it a couple times and a lot of it comes off, but um, the main idea is that you're just moving the, the medium around and, and it, uh, moves the medium and the breeze falls down. So that's a very bad design in my opinion. Um, I do like the idea of having some active um, filter agitation type thing to clean it. But the reason I think it's a very bad design is because you're actively pressing something into the filter and over time or enough times or even just once maybe you can damage the filter and then there goes the filter, right? Um, so I don't like the idea of damaging the filter. Um, so the other bad thing, the main primary thing I have against this vacuum, which I'm gonna, which I know someone's gonna say you can't complain for 180 bucks or 200 bucks, is it is not a HEPA filter. It's not a HEPA filter. I could deal with the system not being completely sealed, which technically can and cannot be true because if you do look at it all the parts that um, where the air really comes in, there is some kind of gasket type thing there. So it's fairly sealed. Uh, I, can't, I can't talk about the air coming out and everything, but um, they, I think they've gone to great lengths to make a great vacuum, okay? Um, but they really failed on 
defiltration. And I think somebody, some, some probably third party um, could probably make a HEPA filter or HEPA medium filter at least that fits in here and replaces this because this is a replaceable part. Uh, all you need to do is replace this one filter in here. And I think if somebody did that, it would be a great, great vacuum, okay? Um, and that is my main gripe against this vacuum, um, besides the whole Craftsman ecosystem line that I don't have on the V20 stuff. It's fine, I can deal with this other extra battery system. It's mainly because we're using this in the house, okay? Um, so then it works really well. So let's talk about the performance of the vacuum. So we have mainly hardwood floors, or actually pretty much all throughout the house, and we can use it um, without the brush rule on, and it actually lasts us a pretty long time. Um, I want to say somewhere around 20 minutes on high um, without the brush rule on. With, 20, with the brush rule on, it really just zaps it all the way down. So um, make sure you keep that in mind. But there are some spots where, you know, the kids spill down on like a Cheerio with milk on it and it's like stuck there. With the brush rule on, it takes it off right away. Obviously, you got to come in and clean it later, but it works fine. It's a great vacuum. And one of the things that I found was even if you're vacuuming up rice or whatnot, there is a little lip on the bottom. It's not a, it's not a big lip. It's a very barely minimally raised lip. Um, but the suction is also so good that even if you have the... Um, um, brush roll on and go over something small things like rice or whatever. It's not shooting out the back. Okay um, Don't get me wrong. It's not perfect. You it's probably not designed to do that But the way the tolerances and things that they built um, with this vacuum is actually pretty good. Okay, so um, We'll throw out some clips of us using it or whatnot. Um, the dust canister are fairly small So we have to empty it obviously a couple times um, through the vacuuming, but um, it works really, really well. And the light in the front, I'm sure everyone always think, oh, the light is pretty stupid. But actually, if you're like vacuuming under a sofa or something, it's actually really useful. Um, so make sure you keep that in mind. We'll, we'll assemble it here real quick to use. So this is pretty much the configuration that we use it in. Um, this does come, a lot of time, this does come. You just slide it on here like so. All right, like I said, it's refreshing. A lot of times I just take this thing off because we don't, I'm not really in a situation where we're using this all the time. So this is a pretty good uh, configuration that we use the vacuum in. Um, this charger, it can charge their V12 and the V20 line. Um, nothing too special. I'm not exactly sure how long it takes, but what I did notice is um, since the battery life is fairly long, it's fine. Um, so 200 bucks, you can get this. I think like a Dyson is like six, 700, depending on which one you get, it's like, like three, four, five times more expensive. But yes, the Dyson is HEPA vac. Um, I do appreciate the build quality of this over the Dyson. The Dyson, I'm sure if you guys have it, you eventually realize the cup gets really scratched up and it looks really dirty. And then the build quality, sure, it looks nice at first, but the tolerances on the Dyson build, especially for fitment of attachments and, and this wand is very bad. Okay, um, so if you look at the Dyson vacuum, um, especially on the newest models, um, it's really held in right where that dust cup is. So when you do this, there's a lot of tolerance in, in this entire assembly wiggles, okay? On this, it's built by like a power tool company with more durability in mind, with uh, I wanna say better tolerances and better material, I say. I mean, this thing here feels like aluminum, okay? Um, so this is a really, really great build. Look at this. It wiggles and shakes a little, but nowhere nearly as bad as a Dyson, okay? I know I'm picking on Dysons here or whatnot. That's mainly because I have a Dyson. I can tell you about it. Um, we also have, we had an experience with Team Co and a bunch of other stuff. But um, So this vacuum is the one I would get if you were in the like $200, up to $200 range. Um, if you have allergies and you just really don't like the idea of that not having HEPA filter, don't get the vacuum because that will really mess you up. Um, for us, I think this vacuum is going back because it doesn't have a HEPA filter. And we have two dogs and there's just hair and little tiny dust particles and, and stuff everywhere. So if someone could come out with a filter medium thing that replaces this um, standard filter, that would be great. Uh, maybe I should find somebody who can manufacture that stuff. Anyways, the point is, it's a great vacuum. If you're in the market for it, pick it up. Um, we, like I said, we have mainly hardwood floors, so we didn't have to use the brush as much, but we did use it on some of the rugs and stuff that we have. Um, and it works very, very well. I'll throw up a video of us using it. The dog hair it, and stuff, it'll pick up in like one or two passes. Like there's a lot down, I'll throw it up. Uh, one or two passes, 
it's good. It actually sucks it up really well. Um, I will also say, if you're using it on high maximum mode after like five minutes or even 10 minutes, I think, you can hear the performance or the suction drop down just a little bit. Um, but it's, no, it's not that bad, um, at least in our opinion. If you're in the Craftsman V20 line and you have like the six, seven, nine, or whatever amp hour batteries they get, definitely get this because it will really help you out um, because you have the extra capacity in the vacuum. Um, you don't, don't pick up stuff like drywall dust and really fine stuff because it doesn't have a HEPA filter. Just be throwing it back into the air. But I do appreciate it. I mean, look at it. Um, we'll throw up some pictures. It's a great vacuum. I'm just really sad that they missed the mark with the filtration. If they did, I would say this is probably the best vacuum for 200 bucks or under 200 bucks. Um, we, we, right now we kind of use the uh, Milwaukee M18 backpack vacuum. I created the video with the ultimate vacuum um, with the Dyson wand. Actually, it works really great. We use it all the time. Um, but I'll, it's not necessarily heavy or whatnot, but my wife is not necessarily the, doesn't want to use it because it feels like you're carrying like a beast of a vacuum and you're sucking it up all the time. So we needed something very simple and nice and um, easy to use. And this would have been a great product. Um, can't knock it on anything except for filtration. So like I said, I hope this video's helped you guys out. If you're in the market, pick it up. Um, if you can deal with it not having a help of filter. So hope this video's helped you guys out and we'll see you guys next time.